Okay, welcome back. Now that we've derived the formulas that we need, we're going to try putting them to some use. This part of the presentation is going to be divided into two parts. Part 3A is going to be some decontextualized problems where we're just practicing the math. And then Part B, uh, 3B is going to involve a pair of, uh, of word problems. Also, throughout this uh, throughout this video, I'm going to be using the same four basic formulas, and so I'm going to put those on a quick reference card right here to the side. All right, let's start with problem number one. We are given that the magnitude of some vector b is 200 newtons. The direction of this vector is 37.55 degrees. Again, we're not given any reference point, so it's safe to say that's 37.55 degrees rotating clockwise, counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Find bx and by. So we're given magnitude and direction. We need to find components. Let's look through our list of formulas, which one has magnitude and direction on one side and components on the other side. Well, let's see. This is components and a magnitude, that doesn't help us because we know that, and we don't know that, and we don't know that. So, uh, so this would, if we were to try to use this, we would have a formula with two unknowns. Similarly, with either of these formulas, again, we got two unknowns and only, um, and only one known. So that pushes us down to these bottom two formulas, where you have the cosine and sine, and. This first formula will work for getting us AX. So if we start with AX, no, sorry, we're working with BX here. BX is equal to the magnitude of B times the cosine of the direction of B. This is useful because we're asked to find BX. We know the magnitude of B and uh, and we know the direction of B. So from here, it's simple. Plug in your numbers and do the calculation. You don't even need to do any algebra. So BX is going to be 200.0 newtons times the cosine of 37.55 degrees. By the way, whenever you're using sine or cosine, make sure your calculator is set to the right units. So Bust out the calculator here, and 200 times cosine 37.55, and let's, before we hit enter, check to make sure, yes indeed, we are set to degrees, hit the enter button, and we get 158.56. If you look at these numbers, you got four sig figs here, four sig figs in the angle, so we need four sig figs in our answer. So that's BX is going to be 158.6. Now the cosine function takes in a, an angular measurement and spits out a unitless number. So cosine of 37, whatever that came out to, it's unitless. The 200 newtons has new units, obviously newtons. So newtons times unitless gives us newtons. All right, so that's half our answer already. The other half, as you may have predicted, involves using the, uh, using the sine function in order to get the y component. So we say by is going to be the magnitude of b times the sine of the direction of b. And you plug in your numbers here. by is going to be 200.0 newtons times the sine of 37.55 degrees. And now you just plug these numbers into your calculator. And in fact, doing the second of these two calculations is easier than doing is easier than doing the first one if you know a certain trick on your calculator. On almost any calculator, uh, any two-line calculator or graphing calculator, so if your calculator has a you know, slightly bigger screen like this, or has a really big screen like this graphing calculator, then you can use this trick. And that is to use the 
recall function on your calculator. Uh, on TI calculators, it's sometimes called the entry button. You usually hit second and then enter, and then it pulls up your last operation. And this is useful because what we did here is really similar to what we're going to do here, except we just change the sine, cosine function to a sine function. And once you do that, then all your work is done. You just hit, oops, don't hit plus. You just hit enter, and you get your new quantity. So by is going to be 121.9 newtons. Over the course of this class, you can save yourself a lot of time by learning how to use the, uh, the recall function. Sometimes it's called recall, sometimes it's called entry, sometimes you just hit the up button and it'll bring up the last operation. It varies from one calculator to the next. But with the TI calculators, it's almost always the, the shift or enter uh, or um, alternate button and the button that you use to actually do the calculation. Okay, getting back over here, um, getting back to problem number two. We're asked to find CX and CY in this second problem. We're given that this angle here is 100 degrees. In other words, if we start at the positive x-axis and rotate counterclockwise, we get a 100 degree angle. It's okay that it's more than 90 degrees, that's fine. So what the graph is telling us is that the direction of C is 100, oh, we should have a decimal point there, sorry about that, otherwise those last two zeros are ambiguous. Okay, so the direction of C is 100 degrees. The C vector is 88 units long. In other words, we have 88 meters of C. Sorry, that little blob there, that's a M. So the magnitude of C is 88 meters. And we're asked to find Cx and Cy. Well, not surprisingly, this uses the same two formulas. We know magnitude and direction, and so we use that to find the x component, component in the cosine function or the y component using this sine function over here. So let's go ahead and plug our numbers into that. Cx is equal to the magnitude of C times the cosine of the direction of C and plug in your numbers. Okay, 88 meters times the cosine of 100. Use your calculator. Eighty-eight times the cosine of a hundred gives us negative fifteen point. Uh, actually, we only got two sig figs, so negative fifteen meters. Okay, so that's half of our answer. And don't be surprised that the x component is negative. Components can be positive or they can be negative. Magnitudes have to be positive. So. It shouldn't be too surprising that Cx is negative because Cx extends, if we were to actually draw Cx, uh, Cy and Cx, Cy would be here and Cx would be here. And if you see how Cx points, it actually points in the negative direction. So not only can Cx be negative, in this case, since we've got, uh, since we've got an angle that is out in the third quadrant, x should be neg uh, the x component should be negative. Okay, let's do Cy a little bit more quickly. Magnitude of C times the sine of the direction of C. And we'll plug in our numbers. That's 88 meters times the sine of 100 degrees. You can enclose the angle in parentheses or not. And again, we use that nice quick function, the recall function on our calculator. Change the sine to cosine, and you're in business. So this is 87 
meters. Sorry, I went off the camera a bit. So Cy is going to equal the magnitude of C times the sine of the direction of C. Plug in your numbers, 88 for the magnitude, 100 degrees for the angle. Same numbers we used up here, except now we've got the sine function. And then you throw that through your calculator and you get 87 meters. All right, so those are your two answers over there. Let's move over here. Okay, so last two problems gave us magnitude and direction and asked us to find components. Now we get the opposite. We get components and we're asked to find magnitude and direction. Okay, so these are our two components. Let's first try to find the magnitude. Now, magnet, uh, if we look at this formula, AX, okay, uh, we know the X component, we know the Y component, and so this, if we were to apply this formula, we would have one and only one unknown, namely the magnitude formula. So this formula will work for D, uh, to find DX. No, not DX, magnitude of D. So magnitude of D is equal to square root of dx squared plus dy squared. And plug your numbers in here. So this is going to be square root of dx, which is 5.11 meters per second squared, plus dy, which is negative 10.0 meters per second squared. Okay, at this point I want to, uh, to pause and show you a potential problem that you could run into with your calculator, especially if you have a graphing calculator or a two-line calculator. And let me make sure you can see the calculator. I'm going to have to adjust its position a little bit. There we go. Okay, so if we were to actually do this calculation, um, if we were to say square root of 5.11 squared plus negative 10.0 squared, close parentheses, and hit, whoops, hit enter. Well, first looks like we have a problem here. Let's see if we can fix that. What the heck is wrong? Non-real answer. Oh, okay. So the problem is not that we made a uh, that we made a mistake. It's that the calculator is telling us that we don't get a real answer. But that doesn't seem right. So I'm going to do this problem again, except I'm going to enclose the negative 10 in parentheses before I square it. Okay, so the only difference between these two rows is that I have a parentheses before the negative 10 and a parentheses after the negative 10. And when I do that, I get a real answer. So what's the problem? The problem is that calculators consider negative signs to be multiply, multiplication by negative 1. And if you remember PEMDAS, you, it does the exponent first. So it takes positive 10, squares that, and then multiplies it by negative 1. But if you look at the original formulation, what you're actually trying to do, you're trying to take negative 10 and square it. Square the negative 10, which should give you 100, positive 100, not negative 100. So negative 10 squared is positive 100. And so the second formulation is giving you the right answer. Now, all right, so one precaution is either enclose your negatives in parentheses before you square them. But if you think about it, negative 10 squared and positive 10 squared give you the same answer after you square them. They're both 100. So the easier way to do it is to just save yourself the time and instead of using negative 10, just use positive 10 as long as you are squaring it. If you're doing any other operation, 
uh, you can't substitute positive for negative numbers. But in squaring, the positive number gives you the same answer as the negative number. All right, so we do this, and again, we get 11.2 meters, uh, meters per second. Now, uh, let me work through, actually work through the math on this. I'm going to do this one step at a time. In other words, I'm not going to do the square root. Oops. If you were to just do the stuff inside the square root, you would get that the magnitude of D equals square root of 126. And the units are whatever you get when you take meters per second and you square it. Well, you square, you, you, squaring is multiplication, and in multiplication you treat the units the same way you treat the, uh, you treat the numbers. So we're going to square each of these. That's going to be meters squared over seconds squared. And then when we take the square root of this, we have to take the square root of both the number and the units. And so this will get us back to 11.8. 2 square root of meters squared per second squared is just meters per second. Oops, sorry, forget about that. Just meters per second. All right, so 11.2 meters per second. Direction of D, again, we got two formulas that give a, take components and use it to calculate direction. And which one we use depends on whether the x component is positive or negative. In this case, we have a negative y component, but that is completely irrelevant to this decision. What we only want to look at is the x component. If the x component is positive, we use the first formula. If the x component is negative, we use the, la uh, the, the formula with the plus 180 degrees. Okay, in this case, obviously, the x component is positive, so we just use the arctangent part. All right, the direction of D is going to be the arctangent of the y component, so that's going to be negative 10.0 meters per second divided by the x component, which is 5.11 meters per second. Okay, and from here, it's just some work with your calculator. Make sure that you actually get the tangent function with the negative 1 in it. Uh, usually, that's accomplished by hitting the shift or the second button on your calculator and pressing the tangent function. Do not calculate the tangent and then raise it to the negative first power. That's a completely different operation. Okay, so we've done the operation here, and we get an angle of negative 62.9 degrees. All right, negative angles might seem kind of weird to you, but in physics, it's not a bad thing. Remember I said back over here that we rotate counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, but remember that's what gives you positive angles. Negative angles just means that you rotate clockwise from the x-axis. So if we were to draw, uh, if we were to, to, to write this out, uh, sorry, to, to graph this out, we would have something like this. This is plus x here, this is plus y over here. Then you would have an angle and uh, vector D would point somewhere down here, where this would be a 62.9 degree angle. 62.9 degrees rotating clockwise from the plus X axis. Sorry, got my X and Y mixed up there. All right. So last of the decontextualized, uh, you know, just kind of plug and chug style problems is over here, 
and we're given two components again and we're asked again to find magnitude and direction same deal Pythagorean theorem for the magnitude magnitude of e is equal to the square root of negative fifth of the x component squared I should have included units there plus the y component squared. Run this through your calculator. Okay, so we got um, square root of 54.99 squared plus 26.38 squared. Notice I left off the negative sign, so that means I need fewer parentheses gives us the same answer anyway, which is 60.99. We have four sig figs all around, so we can keep both of the nines. And the units stay the same. Okay. Again, this should be pretty familiar. We use one of these two formulas over here in order to get the direction. We use this formula if the x component is positive. We use this formula if the x component is negative. In our case, the x component is negative. It's negative 54. And so we have to use this formula. So the direction of E is going to be the arctangent of EY, so it's negative 26.38 meters per second squared divided by negative 54.99 meters per second squared plus 180 degrees. Okay, uh, let's do that calculation. Arctangent of negative 26 point 38 divided by negative 54.99 plus 180 gives us 205.63 degrees. Now we've got four sig figs in each of these so we can keep four sig figs in our answer. By the way the 180 is exact so it's 180.000000000 if you want to keep track of accuracy. 205.6 degrees. Okay. So at this point, I want to pause and talk a little bit about units. You'll notice that uh, I kept track of units in all of these problems, except for this one, kind of broke down a little bit. But you should start to notice some patterns as far as the units go. Okay, if you have some general vector, call it A, some generic vector, some vector that could be any vector, direction of A is going to be in degrees, or you could measure it in radians, but all the inputs we're going to use in this class, or almost all the inputs we're going to use in this class are going to be in degrees, so for now, at least just say that the direction of A is going to be in degrees. And magnitude, there's no set unit for magnitudes. Over here with B, we add units of Newtons. That's because B would have to be some sort of force vector. Over here we got C, which is in meters. That's because uh, C would be some sort of position or displacement vector. Over here we got D, which is in meters per second. So that means that D would be a velocity vector. Uh, or uh, yeah, velocity vector, and E is in meters per second squared. That, those are units of acceleration, so E would be an acceleration vector. So there's no single unit that always works for, uh, for the components and the magnitude. But what we can say is that the components and the magnitude always have the same units. So 
dx and dy are in meters per second, that means the magnitude of d is in meters per second. Uh, b is in, the magnitude of b is 200 newtons, that means bx and by are both in newtons. Uh, magnitude of c is in meters, that means cx and cy are both in meters. So, the units of the magnitude of a, ax, and ay are the same. For the same vector. Okay, so these are that. That's just a little handy footnote to uh, remember for your units. Of course, if you keep track of your units through your calculations and you know how uh, the inputs and outputs of the trig functions work, for example, sine takes in an angle and spits out a unitless number. Arctangent takes in a unitless number and spits out an angle. If you know those. Uh, know those input-output relationships. You don't have to uh, apply these rules. Okay, I said we were going to do some word problems as well. Okay, an AK-47 has a muzzle speed of 715 meters per second. This is based on the Wikipedia entry. Uh, find the components of the bullet's velocity if it is directed 80 degrees above horizontal. In other words, if it's shooting almost straight up, which is about the safest way to point an assault rifle. Okay, so speed of 715 meters per second. Muzzle speed is the speed of the bullet when it leaves the muzzle or the barrel of the launcher, in this case the AK-47. If you remember from 1D kinematics, speed is the magnitude of velocity, and that uh, speed is the absolute value of velocity, and that relationship carries over to two-dimensional situations. Except instead of absolute value, we use its two-dimensional equivalent, namely magnitude. So, really, what this first sentence is saying is the magnitude of velocity is 715 meters per second. Find the components, okay, so we're at being asked to find the components, and this is a two-dimensional system, so we say Vx and Vy. By the way, you will never have to deal with a three-dimensional system in this class. Find the components of the bullet's velocity if it is directed. All right, directed should probably tell you something about direction. 80 degrees above horizontal. Okay, so reading the problem, we extract this information and we identify our unknowns. We're well on the way to solving this problem. Okay, look at your formula sheet. How do we get x component from magnitude and direction? Well, that's the cosine formula. So, Vx is going to equal the magnitude of V, otherwise known as speed, times the cosine of the direction of V. Plug in your numbers. That's going to be 715 meters per second times the cosine of 80.00 degrees. And that is going to be, quick calculation here. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm covering up the numbers here. All right, so we got 715 times cosine 80, close parentheses, enter. That's 124 meters per second. And again, the units of the magnitude and the units of the component should be the same. All right, Vy. We apply the sine formula, same numbers, just a different trig function. Okay, and I'm going to skip down to the next line here. And so you 
being the clever individual that you are, use the recall function on your calculator, change the cosine to a sine, hit enter, and you get 704 meters per second. So, there you go. That's all there is to it. Alright, let's look at another problem. A cab, or you know, nowadays it would be more like an Uber driver, follows city streets which run either east-west or north-south. So it's constrained to move either in the x direction, positive or negative, or in the y direction. You can only do one of those at a time. The cab drives 3.97 kilometers west and 13.0 kilometers south. Find the magnitude and direction of its displacement. Okay? So if you look at the displacement, we've displaced in the west direction and in the south direction, as I've represented with these green arrows here. Now, if we change our cardinal, cardinal directions, north, south, east, west, into Cartesian directions, plus x, minus x, plus y, minus y, notice that dx is actually in the negative x direction. So that means that dx is going to be, once we convert our north, south, east, west to plus, minus uh, xy, it's going to be minus 3.97 kilometers. And your dy is going to be south. That's also in the negative direction, except this time it's in the negative y direction. So we're going to call that negative 13.00 kilometers. Okay. So it pays to both read the scenario and draw some sort of picture if you are not provided with one. Now finding magnitude and displacement becomes a lot easier. But, as always, make sure that you've correctly identified the unknowns, the things that you're solving for, and you've correctly extracted the knowns from your, uh, from your word problem. Okay, let's go ahead and crunch the numbers here. From here on out, it's uh, relatively easy to get, as, as always, you want magnitude from components. You use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, use that, plug your numbers in. Okay, so we do all of this. Don't forget, either enclose your negative numbers when you're doing the calculation on your calculator. Uh, whoops. Um, either enclose your negative numbers in parentheses or just leave off the negative signs entirely. I prefer to leave off the negative signs entirely. So, um, okay. So we say square root of 3.97 squared plus 13 squared, close parentheses, enter. This gives you 13.6. And let's see, we got three sig figs there, four sig figs there. So yeah, 13.6 is the right number of sig figs. And again, units of the x and y components and units of the magnitude are the same. All right, direction. We got a negative x component. That means we use the direction formula that includes the plus 180 degrees. So the direction of D is going to be arctangent of negative 13.00 kilometers divided by negative 3.97 kilometers plus 180 degrees. Okay, so let's, 
Let's do these calculations. Okay, uh, arc tangent of negative 13 divided by three point, uh, negative 3.97 plus 180 degrees, uh, 253 degrees. So, uh, yeah, we only still only got three side phase. That's 253 degrees. Okay, so in other words, we got to start at the plus x axis, go past the plus y, go plus past the minus x into the third quadrant here that's the range of negative 180 to, to uh, sorry positive 180 to positive 270 degrees 253 degrees all right okay with this you should be able to do the homework assignments uh, which have been emailed out if you have any questions please feel free to consult me as always, uh, you have my office hours in your syllabus.